Hello, and welcome to BWB TV at Biotech Week Boston. My name is Antoinette Warren. I'm with Dina Katabi, MacArthur Fellow, and MIT professor. Hi, Dina, how are you? Hi, Angela. So you guys have developed this new device. Can you tell me a little bit more about it and what it does? Sure, sure. So, of course, you have a Wi-Fi box in your home. So imagine if that Wi-Fi box can just sit in the home and monitor breathing, heartbeats, uh, gait, sleep, even sleep stages, like when the person is in REM stage versus in uh, light or deep sleep. All of these physiological signals, even things related to mental health and um, the, uh, the uh, depression-related uh, metrics. Imagine that Wi-Fi box there and doing all of that without asking the person in the home to wear any sensors on their body, just from distance, just by analyzing the wireless signals in the environment. So this is exactly what we do in my group at MIT. We invented, um, you can think of it as a Wi-Fi-like box or smart uh, version of your Wi-Fi box. And it sits in the home and uh, just uses the electromagnetic waves, the wireless signals mm -hmm. that, that are in the environment to analyze, to get breathing, heartbeats, gait, falls of elderly people, sleep stages, uh, depression-related metrics, etc. So Dina, how is it possible to measure someone's vital signs and movements from a distance without any sensors on their body? Yeah, so uh, basically this is the research that we do in my group at MIT. Uh, anything, any movement that you do, like whether you uh, breathe mm -hmm. or you, um, the pulsing of your blood, everything affects the electromagnetic waves around you. Mm -hmm. And we are surrounded with so much electromagnetic waves. We are surrounded with Wi-Fi, with cellular signals, with everything. And any of that, uh, those movements affects and change the electromagnetic waves. And what we do is we have a, a new, you can think of it as a smart Wi-Fi box that mm -hmm. analyzes those changes and discover that you took a breath, uh, or this is the, the pulsing of your blood, or this is the movement of the person. And we can analyze all of those signals. Now, the, the real uh, enabler that enables that analysis is advancement in machine learning. Because as you can guess, I mean, while the, the, the physics mean that everything affects the electromagnetic waves, actually mm -hmm. extracting those physiological signals from the electromagnetic waves around you is very hard and complex, yeah. and advancement in machine learning make it possible to, to do that analysis. And what are the most important applications of this technology? So it has many applications, but let me focus on applications in biotech and pharma. So if you think today about how clinical trials are done, so the patient goes to the site perhaps once every two weeks, and then during that whole time, the full two weeks, the patient is in his or her home, you have no information about them. So imagine if you can have a smart Wi-Fi box that sits in the home and collect breathing, heartbeats, movement, sleep, a um, variety of physiological signals, and without asking the patient to do anything, just live their lives. And then you get that continuous information and that can enrich dramatically the, the clinical trial, both in terms of efficacy and also in terms of safety. There are other applications you can imagine in early also stages, like uh, when you are, today, any drug that you develop, you have to use uh, animal models and you have to also test it on primates, yeah. monkeys. Uh, think about like if you are developing something for sleep and you have to put electrodes, you have to go through surgery, have surgery on the monkey to put electrodes in their head. If you can just measure all of that without that surgery, it's better for the monkey but also is lower cost, it's better for the clinical, uh, for, for, for the, for the uh, development, the drug development process. So what about privacy issues? That's a very important question. Uh, of course, like once you start looking at these electromagnetic signals and being able to discover so much about people without even having to touch them, um, the, the issue of privacy and how we manage this is very important. So for us, uh, we, um, of course, whatever we do in terms of extracting information is based on consent and uh, the patient or the person that, who's monitored 
um, decides what kind of information is extracted mm -hmm. from the electromagnetic waves and uh, also uh, what to do with this information. So this is one aspect. The other thing is that we, uh, we separate the data from anything that is identifiable, that has the identity of the person, and both, inf both types of data mm -hmm. are encrypted and stored in the most secure way. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you for watching BWB TV.